Assalamualaikum and good day. We are in the first part of chapter 6. This chapter is about data modeling and this video is on the overview of data modeling. As usual, we are comparing the chapter in this subject towards the stages in the software development life cycle. Chapter on data modeling is equivalent to database, which is part of analysis, the data model and design the data model to be the database design. For some of you who intend to read the textbook, our textbook is Modern System Analysis and Design, where you can find it in our e-learning system column. You may refer to chapter 8 on structuring data requirement and also on chapter 9 which is about designing database. As a recap on the previous chapter, let's take a look on a sample data flow diagram abbreviated as DFD. This DFD is a part of DFD level 0 on web store case study. You can refer to the textbook page 281 for a complete DFD on the web store. In the DFD, we have several items which are process, entity, data flow and also data store. In this example, Browse catalog is a process, customer is an entity, while product item request is a data flow. The data is coming from a customer to the browse catalog, which is the process. The data flow continues as a product item to the inventory, which is a data store that keeps the information of the product item. Our focus in here is on the data store and the entity. In this chapter, we will focusing on 1. How is the structure inside the inventory data store? 2. What is the attribute that belongs to the data store? 3. What is the data type for each attribute? Then, we will continue on what is the relationship between the data store to the other data store inside the web store system. As a bridging, we can imagine that the knowledge on creating data store for DFD will lead to the creation of data dictionary and entity relationship diagram. Data store in DFD is used to show the data that has been flowed and where it's being stored. Data dictionary is used to represent the structure of the table which is the inner parts of the data store. Meanwhile, the Entity Relationship Diagram or ERD is used to represent the relationship between data store in the entire, entire system environment. Let's relate on where we are in the real world environment. We are using an application, the front end of the application that interact with the user. The application may reside in your laptop or smartphone. The application can also reside on the web server that you can access through the web browser. The application will access a physical database. The database may reside on the same physical location as the application or it can be reside on different physical location. In a database, 
In one database, it contains several tables. A data store in your DFD now is a table which is part of database. Creating DFD is the analysis that contributes to the work on developing the application. Meanwhile, creating the data model, then the database design, is on the back end of the application where the end user do not see it directly. In this picture, we represent the database structure using ERD. In one table, it contains several entities. As a quick reminder, please do not confuse with the term entity that we use in the ERD and the same term entity as we used in DFT. In ERD, data store and some entity in DFD will become the entity in, the, in ERD. Entity in ERD will become a table while we create our physical database. ERD is the logical modeling for database. Physical database is where you actually create the database. Okay, let's get back to a table in a database. One table is an entity. As we refer to the web store case study, a customer, which is an entity in the web store DFD, and also inventory, which is a data store in the same DFD. Both of them will become the entities in web store ERD. So, it will become two different tables in the same web store database. A table contains several attributes. Therefore, to store a record in a table, it has to follow the attribute that contains in that table. As an example from our illustration, data that can be stored for a customer such as name, gender, and age. Okay guys, after a very long recap and bridging the gap, let's focus on what we should achieve in this chapter. This chapter is focusing on data model. Data model is used to help in representing what data is required <coughs> and what format is to be used. Data model is an abstract model that organizes elements of data and standardizes how they relate to one another and to the properties of the real world entity. Okay, let's look inside the data model. In this chapter, we will learn about data dictionary and how it relates to ERD. In a data dictionary, we have entity, as we do mention just now, where one entity has several attributes. Among the attributes, some of them will be the key. Each attribute has data type and also its own structure. As an example, let's consider customer as an entity with a name, gender, and age as the attributes. As we consider varcha, which is a string, as the data type for name, cha for as a data type for gender, and numeric for the age. For the structure, Name, for example, requires 20 characters, so we can specify 20 as a size for its varchar. One digit of cha for gender and two digits for the numerical value for age. Okay, besides data dictionary, we do cover on ERD. Our topic on ERD will be focusing on the relationship between entities and its cardinality. Alright, as a quick recap for a 
overview part in chapter 6. First, we do recap on what has been learned on the previous chapter and how it relates to this chapter. Second, we do mention on how this chapter relates to the actual system environment. And the third, we end the chapter by highlighting on what we will focus on the subsequent part of this chapter, which is on Data Dictionary and ERD. Okay, thank you for watching. I am hoping that this video will benefit you and you will understand the concept on data modeling, inshallah.